What it is, what's up, gotcha podcast in the cut. That's the wrong intro. Your boy, Biscuits from Heaven, back with the absolutely last Attack on Titan first impressions I'll ever do. Unless I do it the anime episode, because I've been fucking behind for almost two or three months now. Um, you know, I really don't even want to go like a whole like large wind up with it. You know, I started doing these shits like in the, the um, I want to say like when, when, uh, Aaron gets locked up, um, with Hanj and all them, obviously spoilers. I mean, if you haven't, it's the fucking last chapter in the entire damn series. If you haven't like finished it and you know, get to work, um, when Hodge got locked up, I think that's one of my first chapters. You know, I, I read through. I started reading, like actually started reading. But my first video, I think, was around that time. Um, I first started reading towards like um, the end of season three, part two, because I wanted to. I wanted to keep on going. I didn't want to stop or nothing like that. Um, and, you know, I mean, the game is the game as far as that goes. I I feel like you know, a certain like for me. If I'm gonna start a manga, for like a, a hype anime series, it's gonna have to be something that's like so good I can't wait. You know, I, I want to taste now. You know, I don't want, I want the whole load, dog. Pause, big pause. I may not even edit this. Though. I may just keep it straight up. You know, I think the if this finale is as good as it should be, which I've heard is fucking terrible. If it's as good as it should be, I shouldn't have to edit it to keep you engaged. I just have to like be interesting. And hopefully I'm interested while reading this because it should be a, a roller roller control roller coaster a roller coaster. Um, chapter one thirty nine or one thirty eight. Um, you know, put some interesting things out there. I mean, the last thing we literally see is Mikasa finally going the Ackerman curse and just chopping Aaron's head off, which was cool. Um. I felt like the character was too far fucking gone for that to matter at that point. Uh, Armin, fucking terrible. Um, pretty much came out the way that he essentially came in. I mean, he's a decoy that got his ass beat so they have a chance to fuck up the big-ass titan that's threatening the whole world. Does that sound familiar at all? That, I mean, we could go into so many things that I may just wait. I may do a review a video after the fact of like every major character kind of get my thoughts on them um but as far as like the chapter i think we need to go on and get into it and then just stop a moment kind of get my thoughts on how this can you know kind of contextualizes throughout the whole art and maybe you know, the whole series but i don't want to make this too long even though i'm sure i missed the last chapter probably like, if it was a 20 minute 30 minute 40 minute video i think that would be within reason for this for this you know scope it's arguably at one point, I would say 10 chapters ago, this appeared to be maybe the best anime series of all time. That's, I think, a trajectory that it was on at one point. And unfortunately, regardless of what this chapter is, I don't think that's possible. I just think it's become too tropish, too, too anime-ish. Not even anime but just too, like, when you're trying to tell a, the story and make a, a good conclusion, when she said the things he said about it's not going to be a good conclusion, I beg to differ. I mean, the version of that may not be what everybody wants it to be. I would say that killing everybody that's a scout that's not a Titan or Ackerman, okay, it is pretty depressing, but at the same time, it's like, most people don't give a fuck about like what happens. Like, does Aaron win? Does humanity win? What does humanity win and look like? I don't think in the grand scheme of things, people really cared about, you know, Connie or John, Jean or, you know, uh, you know those, those people, I mean, yeah, you want to see them get their, their shine and they got their moments. And they were here every walk along the way. It's not like he just dumped them like team, everybody except Seven and Naruto. They, they stayed the entire way through 138 chapters. They got their shine. They they died doing what they, you know, wanted to do, which is save humanity. Um, as, as far as it looked in, you know, 138. Um it's sad, but I mean, like at the same time, like you can still pull a trope happy ending out your ass at this point. I mean, that's, I think that's what, if you thought about Game of Thrones season eight, which I compared, I think five different videos at this point, uh, Attack on Titan to it. 
Daenerys Targaryen dies, Jaime Lannister dies, um, you know, people die, but it's like, the Starks win, Jon Snow faces no reprimand for killing the fucking queen of the entire, like, you know, all of the realms, Sansa becomes queen, Bran Stark is the fucking now, like, the lord of everything, I mean, that shit is as tropish as it fucking gets, just about everybody that's not, you know, wasn't at one point evil or considered mad, i.e. a Lannister, um, a fucking, you know, the Golden Kingdom, um, I mean, like, every everything plays into a good ending, essentially, that's still possible here, I mean, yeah, a lot of, a lot more good people died here, you know, objectively speaking, but, like, I think all the main characters that really got fucked with, you know, the, the primary protagonists are still all on the table. I mean, I don't even consider fucking who else? Fucking um, who else is even there? Like, who like okay, Takani, Jean, who else? Like who else? Who else? Like, I'm, I'm legit asking this one. Who else? Oh, Potato Girl died like 20 chapters ago, 30 chapters ago. I'm. Gabby? Falco? Like, I mean, Falco's still alive. Gabby's dead, but, like, who gives a shit about Gabby or Falco? Yeah, because the, the DNA serum. And Falco becoming a titan the gate of the effect of that. Yeah, that's kind of tough. But fuck Gabby. So, I mean, we, we won. Matter of fact, no matter what happens, a good ending because Gabby's fucking dead. Let's go into the... thousand years later. We're back. The intro for... Arguably the last, I think it'd be a one shot on some, you know, um, like the Bleach's last chapter. I don't know if shit was within the flow of the actual like schedule and it wasn't like a one shot or anything like that. But I, I could definitely see like a light novel or some shit like that coming after the fact, kind of checking on how everybody is after this. It's going to end on that panel. So I imagine what falls into that panel, the panel that we've seen like 57 chapters ago, whatever the fuck it was. I, I think it was the first chapter was the baby panel. I, I don't really remember, but. If we know, actually, that that panel never got showed in the manga. It was just something that he posted on the site. But that's like like six years old or something like that. I think we'll see some kind of contest around that panel. A lot of people thought before this was going to be Aaron being reborn. It's going to obviously be some kind of relationship between Aaron and Historia. I think that's the angle they were pushing for a minute there. I think, like, let me just say what I think the good ending would be for this. The good ending, and I don't mean like the good ending is like tropish, but I mean like the good ending for the majority of people, which obviously didn't happen because the majority of people hate this chapter. Um, and translations, I think, are a big part of that. From what I've seen, a lot of people that hated this shit before, like, good translations came out, kind of changed their opinion a little bit. People don't like to be wrong about what they said, but from what I understand, a lot of people felt a little bit better after reading the better translations. Uh, the best societal good ending i think would be if it involves paths and the concept of being reborn in some kind of capacity that's why i think the best version of this would be like if it if it if it broke the cycle or involved the cycle in some way i think it'd be the best version of this if it involved like a real in-depth like look into emir and and satan and all that shit I think people, you know, the deal that was done, like, people fuck with that heavy. If it involved Aaron kind of explaining, like, his mind state before, like, at, like after the rum rumbling, but before getting his fucking head cut off, I think people would fuck with that. Um, Levi closure, I think people always like that shit. I think Levi has done everything he needs to do as far as the character. He pretty much killed, yeah, he, he, he I think we'll get, like, a couple pages about him fulfilling his, you know, debt to Erwin. But I, after that, I mean, I don't think there's really anything you can say about him. Maybe Andy closure. I think people always fuck with Andy. You know, I think that's the best version. It's just characters kind of getting their send-offs. And then, really, the, the overarching thing that needs to happen is something that concludes paths. That that has to happen. If there's not anything to do with paths, this shit isn't, wasn't even worth it. The bad ending is, like, if a story, like, this is, like, Aaron's baby. And, like, it's the first baby to be broken from the cycle. That's some trope-ass bullshit. And I pray to God that's not what happens. It's like a mental, like, fucking conversation they're having. It's like the younger version of them, obviously, that's not possible. They're kind of talking after the fact. 
I just want to say, what am I doing? I just want the flow of events. I'm sorry. It should be me because it's sitting that you're saying this to me, not me. Yeah, the, you know, it references back to when Aaron, like, fucked both of them up. Ah, shit. <laughs> I mean, Aaron Aaron clearly, like, the end game from Jump for Aaron was they win. Now, he gave, he gave him a hard time because I think at the, on some level, I my, my thought was I think he was kind of persuaded by Amir in some way, like, not even knowing it. But I think on some level, he legit wanted to save their island and their people. But on another level, I think he also knew that they were going to be the ones who won. So he kind of had to battle them two demons in a way. Ah, shit. Okay, so we get the... That's, that's a checklist. I think that's a checklist off of the good ending. We see now why he did what he did, even knowing that he was going to hurt his friends, hurt pretty much the majority of the population of the world. You know, that this is the fucking reason he did that shit. This this is an in-depth, plain test reason why he did his shit. That's what I think a lot of people want. That's a good start. Even amongst the island devils, there were doubles of Paradise Island that opposed what I did, kept the humanity. There were history books will will portray... Aaron and and Zeke as the fucking demons, basically. Well, even Zeke didn't co-sign the shit that happened at the end, but, you know. V of V, you know. There you go. I, I assume that pretty much every continent got fucked up by the Titans, but. <laughs> That's tough, dude. To say that shit plain tits. 80% of all humans were killed on the rumbling. They won't be able to go to battle. That's including the motherfuckers that got turned to Titans. That's including, you know, anybody else that, that Caterpillar and Mir turned to Titans outside of that little area. I mean, you would think that with how far they, they transversed um, and how much, you know, how far humans, like the humans we know, the, the um, you know, um, Paradise Island and the, um, the, the, the Marlian people were pushed up against the wall. You would assume they kind of got to most of the world. But hearing that plain text, 80% of all humans were killed. I'm going to live that shit forever, dude. Are they going to go to the beach? So it, this is a narratively interesting way of doing this. You know, it, it feels like paths. It may just be akin to that dream that Mikasa had where, like, I, I think that dream is kind of Aaron before. I don't know. I still don't know to this day if it was completely a dream or it's actually, like, something she experienced. But I think it was kind of half and half. Um, I think that was before Aaron became the Aaron that he's become. Um, this is clearly after the fact. I kind of feel it's pathish, but he's going to, I think, explain her. Feelings. And yeah, this this is like traveling through time. I think it's like kind of like from Jump Street to, to now. My shit's lag like a motherfucker right now, bro. Am I am I encoding fucking up? It says I'm not, but I'm pretty sure my coding is fucked up. 2,000 years ago, okay. I have a married potato submit to the king for this leading to the Titan Party. We still see today. The, the demon deal, whatever, yeah. I've obtained that power that right with God. I'm ready to burn down our home, trouble from this toward our tongue cheek to you, submit. Wait. So, Amir. I don't remember who Amir's I thought Amir's father was the king, but I guess not. Okay, I got to reread that part, but okay, let's continue to go. That's the king, Carl Fritz, ain't it? Please scroll down. That's the true reason that Amir's restrictions persisted for the last 2,000 years. So she was cool being a subject, basically. And you hope that someone could feel the pain of her life. Only allowed to feel the Wait, what? Me? What? I'm guessing because Mikasa fucking loved Aaron so much, even though he was an asshole, that she kind of related to it. That's how I would think about it. It's a vibrant ass. This is like a beautiful panel. 
God damn, you're gonna make me really give a shit about Mikasa, man. I thought I've been shit talking Mikasa for fucking an entire like damn near two years. I think I made me give a shit about Mikasa. My most viewed video ever by multiple thousands of views is me shitting on Mikasa and Armin. Do you understand that shit? My most viewed video ever. I will probably never get 8,500 views on a video ever fucking again. And that is me shitting on Mikasa. My last video about Attack on Titan, which was posted like two days ago if you want to go watch it, was shitting on Mikasa because she finally became a redeemable character again for the first time in like fucking like five years. Mix the fucking save the entire guy. Well, save, I don't think is the way, the, the right word to use. I they fucking doomed in a way, but saved a mirror, you know. They're fucking spouting, you know, bullshit again. I mean, he was just off the bar, so I mean, I don't know what. What is this? You know, what is this done by? Is she gonna meet? Because I mean, they're. Amir was in the mouth when she cut Aaron's head off. So, what's she gonna do? Like, fucking kill Amir? Was what led to his end result? So, he basically was her, her, her jockey, as I think many of us kind of. He was also alluding to really in this video. I mean, he was in paths being controlled by her. I mean, I think he saw it as him controlling her, but. With him being restricted from her heart all the way, I think he's being played. Yo, this is tough, dude. They, I, I think this is kind of a good ending. Aaron is not just the purest fucking piece of sh fucking human filth. Yes, he fucked up most of the world. He was the care. Like, if he doesn't have that thought process that Paradise Island means more than everybody else, then Amir came and used him as a vessel. But Amir clearly had an influence over his thought process at a certain point, and there's nothing he could have done. It was inevitable. I mean, the founder, he was, he was just a body at that point. On that day at that time, Bertho wasn't supposed to die. Wait. Wait, what? Are you saying that Okay, so Burho wasn't supposed to die. I'm with you. Are you are you saying that he chose Armin? He put the situation in in such a way that Armin would would live? So it's kind of fast forward to, to kind of, you know, you finally got clean punch on fucking Aaron took long enough. <laughs> who's she gonna who's she gonna find? <laughs> Aaron's a real ass nigga, man. I fuck with Aaron again, dog. This is a blank ass fucking okay. That's that's a boner killer. They got a blank ass fucking bubble. Aaron's a real ass nigga, man. That nigga toss is a motherfucker. Then they got his head fucking cut off, dude. What else can? There's no way they can bring him up. Point blank range is a fucking head blown off by Gabby. Then the founder comes in and like connects to his fucking head. They can't bring Aaron back. He so he should have died episode two. They can't bring him back no more. He's done. Or episode three, episode four. Whatever. He should have died episode two. 
Okay, so he wasn't aware if they would actually stop him or not. Is this what it looks like post uh, Rumble? Wow. Oh my God. This lag is killing me, dude. Is this going to be the panel? Is he, is, I'm thinking that's Carla and this is Grisha. That's Grisha talking. I, I, I can get that much. Okay, so this is Aaron talking to do when they like kind of linked up was grabbing each other. He had this moment with them, kind of let him know what was up, and then kind of clears his conscience before he kind of. I think he knew at this point he's fucking dead as shit. Wow, that's a uh, that's a hard panel right there, dog. It's like it's like fucking shit rock or whatever the fuck it is, like a turd. Dude, this lag's killing me, bro. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna use it as a thumbnail, but it's only because like people are gonna be so fucking confused. Like, what the fuck? Am, am I am I should I put this video up right now? I don't even know I should put this video up, dog. I may, but what, what did he save? That reminds me of the kind of the rock that. They were on the mountain. They were on. They got, everybody got killed off of, but it's not really the same. Um, we're going to flash forward, I think, back to after Mika so kills um, Aaron after this. I don't I don't know what the process. I, I, I think he just basically admitted that Barkho wasn't supposed to die. He killed Barkho. Um, he killed Barkho, basically, breaking the, the cycle, the timeline. And he also picked Armin, who probably shouldn't have been the choice. Basically, none of that should have happened the way it happened. It's how I interpret that. That's the biggest thing to me. Now, him also revealing that he's basically like kind of possessing the way uh, Mikasa being the end goal of Emir. I, I'm not even sure how much free will Aaron had in all this. That's that's the biggest thing that I'm about to come trying to take away from this, you know, is that I don't really know how much it was 50 50, 60 40 Aaron, 60 40 Amir, 90 10 Amir. I, I really don't know. My, my, my thought process says it was 90 10, it was, it was like 70 30 Amir, and the 30 that Aaron contributed was allowing Emir to use him as a uh, body. Here we are, I guess. Back to reality. Shout out to Eminem. It's kind of like a phoenix at this point. It reminds me of a phoenix, kind of. Falco. Birds, birds, and more birds. So Aaron is confirmed dead and the final titan is confirmed gone. He's gonna just hold his head forever, though. And now he can remember his memories because Aaron is dead. What? That that wasn't shown in the last chapter. I if I I may be sped as fuck. That wasn't shown in the last chapter. I'll tell you that shit right now. I don't unless the unless we about to see 
like another version of the conversation that just took place with Armin with me. But that I think that dream was what was Mika still talking to Aaron. I think that was the version of what he just did with him, Armin. I don't. When was that? What did he talk? Did she talk to him? Okay, let me. I sound like a black person watching the movie there, and I'm trying to skip to the fucking end of the fucking movie before I even watch, you know, the half point. I'm gonna assume that after this, they're gonna have a moment where Amir talks to Mika because I don't know what the fuck else could just possibly happen that a lot of the events that just took place that happened. Titans are done. There's no more Titans. The shit that 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 um that that third option where the not not the third the first option where they would have just basically eliminated all the Eldians and killed Titans that way essentially took place, but just not the same way. It's like they kind of did the first option without basically paired as wins, but nobody else wins. It's just, it's how they went about doing that. It's like the flip flop of that version. Uh, yo, all right, man, let's get back to it. I don't know what the fuck to just say about what I just So among, basically everybody that has memories that Aaron like kind of allowed them to have. Um, fucking knows that Aaron kind of ate, ate the fucking, you know, he freed the World of Titans by sacrificing 80% of it. So Aaron talked to everybody basically. He caught a body basically. He he sacrificed himself so everybody could be free of Titan Titanry, and they you know they were like almost there and you know kind of a pump fake by Isayama you know doing that shit last chapter. God fucking Gabby, fuck Gabby's still fucking alive. God damn it. Ah oh, okay. Is it we about to die or some shit? I think it's just like kind of a, a spiritual thing, but I don't think Levi's actually about to fucking die. I think it's kind of a vision. If Levi did die, I think that'd be a reasonable way to go. What? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, all right, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait. Wait, wait, it's not, it's not that at all. That fucking scene of the dead people. Oh, shit. Um, uh, I don't, I don't know about that one. Uh, you, you said they didn't, um, they didn't show Shadows. They didn't show, um, old buddy was the commissioner before, uh, at, well, after earning before, um, Hodge either. Oh man. Um It's like some goddamn Naruto after the fucking uh, Infinite Tsukuyomi Edo Tensei gets fucking removed and Fucking Hashirama's telling Mardo, like, you've lost again, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what he said, but, you know. You know, Hashirama. Motherfucking Gabby Suplex is fucking Falco. Why not? I need you by my side. Why not? Why not? I can't see that shit ever get after this, dude. Oh, man.
No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you ain't. <laughs> that ridiculous really sandy cheeks. Um. Okay. Is this what he meant by the hero? He's he's probably gonna be like the damn Tyrion Lannister, where he kind of like is the. This, actually, this is his Tyrion Lannister moment. He's the guy that basically talked down the remaining Marleyan force. The fuck are they gonna? They, they they could just fucking keep the damn shits on and just fucking speed blitz them. Mikasa could have fucking came back and just I don't know. Dude. This is I, I, this is the way it is. I guess I don't, I don't know. It's not a, it's not like a really conflict anything I have you know. But it's just like at the end of the day, if they wanted to kill these dudes, they could. They don't have Titan powers anymore. But I mean, they still. That's a baby, I'm guessing. Is it a time skip? Oh. Shout out to my nigga, uh, Yaki Akuchki, fucking Heaven and Earth quote. Wait, what the fuck? Does she have a different baby or some shit? Who the fuck is a. What if the baby's Mikasa's baby? Oh, fuck. No, 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 no. It's, it's not because it's baby. No, it's not. No, it's not. The Jaeger faction. I'm guessing Arm is the leap. Fucking voice drop. Okay, so they kind of militarized the country. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That's whatever. All right, cool. It's a fucking, like the restaurant do that. Fetting the fucking Zeke food. Dude, what the fuck was the point of? No. Okay. Historia is Lee. Okay. Royal blood. All right, cool. Queen Historia. So he gave them basically. He took away the curses of the fucking Titans and all that shit. Thirteen years out of the other, but in turn, like he couldn't prevent. You know. He gave him an evil playing, even playing field, I guess, basically. <sighs> There's definitely some, some still translation problems. I may reread this again after they have the official shit come out in two, year, two days, but. So now that's, uh, that's peak, right? I always forget the bitch's name, but jo the the cart titan that that's Peak, I believe. I forget her name, but that's Peak. I'm pretty sure. So Peak is like friends with them now. I didn't mean that in a misogynistic way. I just the first word comes to my mind. Anyway, let's keep on going. Who else was it? The word Jean, Connie. Nobody else from that group that was a human is alive anymore. Like, it's just them two. Everybody else was a Titan. So it's like, we didn't really lose that much in the grand scheme. Think about the scouts. That's my POV. I mean, we saw the two of them early in this chapter. I mean, we, they they stayed dead. Who would have given a shit? Okay, you want to say it's basically the, um, like, the, the revival shit that, um, who used that shit? Was it fucking... Was it Hagaromo? Or was it Madara? I don't remember. Like, after they sealed Kaguya and Sasuke and Naruto blow each other's fucking... Well... No, that, that's unrelated. But after they, they sealed Kaguya, doesn't Hagaromo use the, um... The Renegon technique that, that Pain Nagato used to revive everybody? That's basically what this is. It's like... Dragon Balls, you know, in the Kid Boo arc. That's kind of what this is, if, I, if I'm framing that correctly. I might have been a frame. I'm fucking leaning back and shit. Shut the fuck up, Falcon. <laughs> Everybody who fucks with Gabby is fucking scum to me.
If he starts kissing Andy in like the middle of that shit, that's a W. I mean, crippled ass Leva. Motherfucker ain't gonna walk anymore. And Cherisama Leva. God, this fucking lag is killing me, dude. Oh, you experience quite the very same people where you can still jump some game with the bitch. I fucking open open the Kanye. Damn, dude, we got the fucking eye blown on everything. Holy shit. I mean, it looks kinda eye. I mean the face got put together decently. Fucking eye got blown out. What the fuck looks like um uh, I don't have a comparison this very moment, which I funny before I very young. So this is the first I've come back to Paradise since. Why the fuck would Historia be mad? They saved the fucking world, bro. I don't know what... Do you, do you really think the Historia will pick fucking dead-ass Aaron? I know he talked to... I know he, like, you know, kind of maybe knocked it up. But, like, why would she pick Aaron over everybody else in the fucking island that went out there? I mean, even Mikasa and, and, you know, certain other Paradise people went ahead of them. I don't know why... She would be pressed. I don't understand that reaction. Fuck you, you can see damn simp ass motherfucker. <laughs> that's that's what the, that's the right reaction for me to have, man. That, that's fucked up. I shouldn't say that, but is he gonna take? The, is she? Did he take the scarf? Is the bird supposed to be like a symbolism of Aaron? Is that what I'm to gather from this? It's like a white dove situation. Okay. The scar falls down, he picks it back up and he puts it back over. Okay. That's a symbolism of Aaron. That's that's a touching moment. I'm not even gonna hold you. The only moment that got me emotionally was Hans dying. They got me with that. I don't even know how they got me with that, but they got me with that. I don't know I don't even like Hans that much, but like I like her. I mean she's a good character, great character, but like I just don't like I don't have a fascination with her, but they got me on that. And then um when they, when they all got turned to Titan, I kind of got, I didn't tear up, I just kind of got a little bit like, kind of morose. I don't, I don't, I guess I have become so disattached to Mika, so that I just couldn't, I guess it moats this the way it is. But it's a very touching moment, very well, I guess, put together. Wait, that's it? The baby, the baby, what? What, the baby? The bank, the bank. <laughs> Alright, you got me. You got me one more time. Fuck you each time. You got me one more time. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna turn up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm mad, but I'm. I, I don't know what I'm feeling right now. He, he didn't. He didn't do the baby. Well, he, wait. No, because I mean, it, wait. No. That's not the one I'm looking for.
the son of a bitch. Isayama showed the text that says you are free. He didn't show the Aaron. <laughs> it's very sad, Aaron. You are free, so do whatever the fuck you want to do with what to that lady. Here, okay. Here's one problem, and this is why I guess I could believe that Aaron like literally used his father, I guess, to kind of talk to himself. His father clearly did not agree with what happened at the end of his life. Like when Greece is about to die. Or at least the last time we seen Grisha. The shit. He, he saw Aaron's plan. The shit that happened was not something he agreed with. So the Aaron you are free was some shit basically Aaron kind of planted in himself. That's my interpretation. I don't, the thing is, Grisha clearly did not believe in that shit. So the only reasonable conclusion is that Aaron put the words in his mouth. Why Aaron would talk to himself and say that you're free. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why he would do that. I don't understand why he would say that. That's not the biggest thing in the grand scheme of things. But... I mean, you get to a point where it's like, where the fuck did Grisha even actually decide anything? Because if he was controlling the thought process of Grisha even at that moment, it's like, when the fuck did Grisha have his own... Because, I mean, we saw Grisha didn't choose to fucking, like, eat the the um, Rod Rice's fucking family and all that shit. So, I, I don't... So, the main people, the main problem most people have with this, from what I gather... Is that we really don't, well, there seems to be two problems. We really don't have a concrete idea for why Aaron did whatever Aaron did. With, with his decision to go dolo, to do, well, everything before him confirming he wants to do the rumbling. But it's pretty much confirmed to just be a step to, to doing the rumbling. Him going dolo, which I would guess was in, to separate his friends from the events that he was going to take place. He knew they would come because at this point he already touched the metal and all that shit. So he knew they would come to stop him or to, to help him, not stop him, but to help him. Um, you know, he played Zeke like a fiddle. All that shit is something that we know was a part of stuff. Setting up 
the meeting with the mirror and starting the rumbling. But the problem is, you know, and this is where I'm getting from this, um, kind of trying to take some own intuition here. The freedom that he looked for ended up not being actual freedom because they're still fighting. They're just free from the Titans. And from what I gathered, his whole problem with the Arzumbitos and all that shit was that it was more than just like Titans. Like he wanted them to be legit free from like the fucking like the fucking like hate that the damn Paradise Island goes through. And it's like the Paradise Island is still fucking hated. At the end of the day, they had to go militarize. It's not like they what he even wanted as far and I, I think this I think there's a certain part of the, of the war of the of the loop. After he dies, the loop is broken. He doesn't know what happens after that. So at this point, you know his his almighty to quote Yuha Bach is done. Like, he doesn't see anything else up to that point. But he thinks this is the best position they could put him in. Okay, so I just don't see. Oh, so he crushes eighty percent of the world. Now, this is what touched on in one of his tweets. He crushes eighty percent of the world. Twenty percent he leaves enough to where. Some people can still see that they're the, the the good people. Okay. But like, why would you risk that? Like, if they still end up being demonized as they appear to be, why risk that? That, that That's my... I, I haven't voiced, I think, the right way at all in this video. But that's essentially what happened. He wanted his freedom. The path he took ended up him just being a puppet for the mirror. He doesn't even seem like this. I mean, like he seems happy that his friends and the paradise got saved. But everything else that happened was just seemed like some shit. He just was not kind of co-signing. Fucking gaming claw. <laughs> I was his name in a fucking wall. Holy shit. The you are free shit. Like, I don't even think, based on what I saw with the story shit, I don't even think like he knew that this was going to be the end game at that point. It was a good chapter for me because like, this, if anybody won from this chapter, I think Armin kind of got his balls dropped finally. He's kind of finally became the real like voice of of uh you know an influential voice that can kind of make some, some persuasion happen on a large militaristic scale uh that that's you know it, it took them fucking seven years to kind of pose him as that person but okay he finally had a moment okay but mika said that dang death was a big winner um I, I, yeah, that that's not a moment that I that the more I think about it, I just know that Grisha said that to to Aaron. This this fucking dude just clearly didn't pay attention. That. That motherfucker just inserted his own reality. That's going to be a problem. A lot of fucking people that are mad insert their own reality. Including me. I thought that fucking baby was a story to this very day. The fucking baby ended up being Aaron. <laughs> I, you know? I, I thought the story's baby was also would be Aaron. I, I thought that. I thought the story's baby would be the fucking baby that... I, you know, this might be a 40 minute video, dude, with me just scrolling through Twitter. I, I hope y'all are, you know, willing to go with me here because, I mean, I'm trying to get to the the, the meat of the situation because it, it, to be honest to God with you, a lot of questions don't have answers. I mean, I know I should have a lot of anime. Like, you go to fucking JoJo's part, like, fucking sits. It's like, oh, well, you know, not really a lot of answers there. Um, you know, Death Note kind of ends in a, a good way. Uh, you know, they reference Cold Gas. I never watched that, but I heard that it had a really weird ending. Um, you know, 
a lot of anime kind of in the way that either is this kind of usually two paths. It's as conclusive as possible, but as quick as possible. Like Bleach ends with just you know kind of a fucking whimper. Naruto ends more of I'm trying to set up another foundation type of way. I'll say that Naruto Sasuke doing what they did. You know that's kind of finale. You know they're kind of cool. Naruto Kage yada yada. You know V of E. If we didn't know Naruto the last was going to come out, then maybe it would have seemed like a, a real fine, final conclusion. But, I mean, Dragon Ball, you know, I mean, Ubi mentioned that shit was never going to end like that. I mean, Goku doesn't, Goku's training Ubi, you know, they're going to do something with that. Um, You know, FMA Brotherhood ends. I think FMA Brotherhood probably is like one of the best anime endings ever. Like, Because there's no question you can ask after that. It's done. And there's maybe some some qualms you may have about how certain people got to certain places and um, how relationships kind of form at some point, but like that's fin- it's final, it's done. This, uh, and it also, uh, uh. An incredible waste of potential. Like, type in type in the mirror. Let's see what the streets are talking about in mirror. I, I think Aaron's gonna be a funnel for a lot of hate because I mean he's the face of the franchise, he's fucking Aaron Yeager, yada yada, but like I think a mirror might be the motherfucker y'all wanna say this who what the fuck happened with this character? Like it's just petty grievances that kind of... I mean, she got fucking, like, abuse and shit like that. Like, not petty grievances, like, necessarily that she has with the relationship between Carl Fritz and all that shit, but, like... I mean, her personal feelings dictated the strife of millions of fucking people, billions of fucking people. You know, the, I said two big, I, I said two problems. The third, outside the two characters I mentioned, that one out of all this, and maybe you can mention Levi too, it just has, you know, some sappy moments, kind of get some emotion out of the dude. I, I don't think, you know, we really get much of a, uh, we get a resolution, but like, it's like, it's a feel like resolution. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what th- this. This doesn't feel like a. Uh, I don't know. This. I don't know what this feels like. It feels like an uh, ending, but like it doesn't feel like an uh, ending to to what was like there for the past. You know, ten chat like pretty much when they fuel the boat up and they go out there to you know. Go head to head with Aaron. Aaron talks to him. It's like, you got to get your ass kicked. From that point on, I'm like, this don't... Matter of fact, for I would say all the way... This is like fucking eyes and like, when did you think I didn't have fucking Kyoko so get to going? I'm just thinking like, even back when fucking, you know, they meet in paths, like a mirror and, and, and Zeke and Aaron are post up in paths. Even then, I'm like thinking like, was this the finale for that? Like, that moment lead to this? Maybe there's some philosophical things to be said there. Okay, Amir loved her slaver, so that's why she carried out the will of him for 2,000 fucking years. You gotta also, like, realize that Amir's a kid when that shit happened. So, like, she was literally always eternalizing 2,000 years later the, the think process, thinking process of a kid. And so the pain for love is basically keeping the the the, the fucking Carl Fritz's I guess dream going. 
Mika's going through something similar with Aaron. She had to embolden Mika of the strength to do what she needed to do. It starts getting like fucking like super remote, like emotion, like romantic type. It, it goes a lot of different directions, genre wise. Pedophiles. <laughs> That's funny. Um, it's just the way he said that was just funny to me. Inspiring her the world. It's not funny p- pedophilia, but like, anyway. Yes. In effect, Aaron saw it. But the thing is, Aaron doesn't have any fucking control of what he did. <laughs> Aaron was fucking just a vessel for a mirror. I mean, he pushed. He, he His last free will moment to me was when he went up to a mirror and, you know, said what he said and passed. He pushed her to do something new, but then she took that and just basically used him to get that new shit done. How much, like like I said earlier, like 20 minutes ago, how much is this Aaron and how much is this is Amir, you know? Niggas gonna treat Mika so like fucking, uh... <laughs> I don't even know. There's no comparison, I think, to any other female hero- heroine in the history of anime to Mika to Ackerman. Amir did... Uh, Alright, man. It's, it's an interesting narrative style. Okay, I'll give you this. But Amir has one moment where every single thing depicted in this chapter is because of her and you know even if it's because of Aaron is because of her so indirectly it's still her everything that's told is from her decision making and literally no one has any access to her true like core feelings even Stephen said as much her true like true will you would we, we get the rip like the main part of it is that she wanted to be free and Mika was the only one that could free her and the entire world from that curse that she put on. Okay. But there's so much... I think there's so much uh, nuance around that. That I, I, I'm, I'm leaving this just thinking, like, why not just have a near talk to fucking Mikasa? You see, now, now saying this shit is like, you know, it's like if you really understand, like, how, uh, like, Stockholm Syndrome shit, like, 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 people that get raped are, like, fucking, like, out of there. Like, they're fucking mentally, like, in a different world. And especially if it's, like, a kind of, like, a statutory, like, you know, like, family, like, not family, but, like, almost, like, relational love. Because I think she kind of also viewed... King first, like a father and, and replacement you know, as well. It wasn't just a, a romantic love. I think it was also like a fraternal love, kind of, or paternal love. I, I, I don't know if this is... Okay, so this, this is just people that need to fucking shut the fuck up. Like, if you... Like, shipping, that, that, that shit is ridiculous. And yeah, it's Stockholm... I'm, I, I mean, I, you don't have to write like this. This is just like people don't understand the way writing works. Like it, he's saying it from the appearance. Okay, so you say Stockholm syndrome, but what goes into Stockholm syndrome is typically real emotion. If you look at how that it played out, a lot of the time it's not just pure fucking like mental games being played by one side to the other. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of it. That's 99% of it. But, like, usually something spawns from that that ends up being some form of love. Like, you could call it, like, a kind of, um, you know, like, like the way Stockholm Central works. Like, it could be just, you know, kind of spawned from somewhere where you wouldn't even think it came from. Like, they show, like, let's say that the captor shows some real moment of real love and compassion for that person and then that little droplet 
splashed into the person's brain and it's just, it, it clouds everything else. That is, in effect, Stockholm Syndrome, but you're ignoring what really comes out of Stockholm Syndrome. It's not just fear. It's not just some unwavering debt. Sometimes in those situations, actually love does happen from the, the captive to the captor. It happens. I mean, that's how that works in real life. And Mika said her devotion was Stockholm Syndrome. Aaron legitimately had that woman fucking under, uh, up until 139. Maybe you could look at it differently now. But up until this point, he's going to drive that woman fucking crazy. To, to the point of like, looking like she put the fucking off herself in the previous chapter. And she had to get pushed to do the right thing for the whole universe. That shit is exactly what Amir's going through. Amir had to get pushed to save the whole universe by the same person. Uh, well, I, I guess Aaron didn't push me. Well, Aaron did push me because the last thing she thought about before she killed him was that past moment that Aaron had with her. So, in effect, Aaron did push her. I think Levi kind of did a little bit more of that. But, um... People want to insert their own narrative, man. Let Isayama cook, dude. Let the motherfucker cook. What does it... Is it Thanos and um, an Infinity Gauntlet? That's what this reminds me of. Thanos and Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> is that saying neither? Why does that say that? Well, yeah, that show, that show was delusional. He basically said, like, the N-word, dude. That, that was, he basically was saying the N-word. I think I think the paradigm switch. I think we went from trying to understand, you know, how a, a mastermind, you know, fucking put this shit together to seeing how a man who kind of tried to put a lot. From what I understand, he had like two, three, four, five different endings going into this, and I think that that was clearly. Uh, um, Something that, that he had trouble kind of resolving, even himself. Like, what's the connection between some of these endings? And clearly, I think that he had, like, the. I think he had probably up until, like, Aaron getting controlled by Emir down, like, as a fact in his mind. And I think after that is where you kind of see that it's like, how do we get from there to here? I think he had different means of doing that. I guess that's what I would say. This is an hour. I've been going for an hour, but holy shit. I got one more place that I really want to go talking about. Um, yeah, I, I got to see what they're talking about here. After this, we're going to wrap this up because I know y'all wasn't trying to hear me uh, bullshit for an hour, but I'm, I'm posting it raw. No editing. We just... Putting it out there, dog. Then I'm gonna give you some context to the post. I mean, I'm sure someone on KTT is gonna see this shit. This motherfucker is a Myher Academia stand. Don't even fucking listen to him. He's a fucking, he's a goober. Like fuck him. So Aaron wipes eighty percent of the hungry face because he's playing some million dollars friends, right? That's playing that. Yes, yes, that is not. He, ha he basically had a moment the way he had with Armin and Mika, so they couldn't get shown for everybody. That basically resolved him as a hero to everybody. To all of them, a hero. To everybody else that is outside of this fucking, that, it's outside of that area, not a fucking hero. <laughs> I 
I'm not going to lie. I've, I've done this like what, four or five different times. You can can you can you look at the event that transpired and bits that transpired in this chapter and say it was good? Yes, it's all about perspective. If you believe that this romantic angle that both the Mikasa and Amir had were so powerful that that love was so powerful that it triumphed over the hate that kind of allowed Fritz to have that original idea to to do what he did with the Titans. Um, on top of the hate that is uh, you know. Pers- pervaded over Marley and Eldia um, and their people. Yes, but love over Trump, love for Trump and over hate, that's definitely not something that people want to hear about. Is this, is this basically the same ending that happens in Code Geass? Because that's what I'm seeing. That this is the same thing. Um, yeah, you can finally put a manga list that this is officially done. It's gonna be it's gonna be a very wide range of of uh, opinions. I, I I can't give my actual like, until I, I shut this video down, kind of look over things. And I, I don't I don't I don't know that I can give an actual opinion on this because I don't necessarily think that I like this, but I I, I think I like parts of it. Like I think the way he used that panel, even though the text around that panel was fucking probably like sped I mean but you know I mean yeah can you say it feel a rush okay because I mean you get the moment with Armin and that's about probably 10 pages you can go from that to the actual like them on the battlefield concluding that's like what like 10, 11 pages. And like the other 20 is kind of like just kind of, you know, in between the sketch, like primarily Mika, such as fucking, you know, crying. But like, um, also them talking on the way back to El- um, Paradise Island. So it's like, I mean, you could probably say some, some space there to be used. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> That's what that is. So that was that was see I was thinking I was thinking for like a half a fucking second that 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 Titan going wasn't what was 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 the house being being crushed and but I don't I don't understand why it's like a, a payback thing. Like did he have Bert Holt die so Armin could be the dude and because he fucked that up the way he did, that's why he sent. What what changes if he doesn't do that? I mean I guess Carla I mean Aaron is still Titan because of that. Like, he still has Titan blood in him because of the shit they you know. He ate Grisha. Like that shit still happened. So I'm like thinking to myself, like, that that part I don't that part I don't I don't get that part. Right, let me go back. I'm not. And yeah, it's just like he can like kind of change the, the the time that that those memories that he implanted happens. But like, 
Yeah, I, I guess that would be saying he kind of knew he was fucking fucked by the, like the second that he announced. Pretty much, he knew he was fucked for like a hot ass minute. It seems like. Yeah, I mean, that's a fact. I mean, we can say one thing, like, even though you don't like the conclusion necessarily, we got from point to point B on each character in a semi-feasible way. I mean, some of those along the way and actually ending it may kind of not be ideal, but I mean, like, it's not like he was, you know, like, fucking, like, redeeming Jamie Lannister and then, like, at the end, Jamie unwraps his entire character to go fuck with Cersei one more time. Like, that's not, that's not exactly the same thing, you know? Is this really, I don't want to spoil cold yes, but this is really what happened like verbatim that like the main character basically like fucking kills the world, but like, he does it for like a, a fucking like emotional reason, like to, to be the hero. Like is that, is that is that what happened to Cold Yes? Let me know if you're still watching this an hour and eight minutes in. Is that what happened to Cold Yes? Historia, that's def Historia like Historian that baby, that, that that can't be. I don't care if shit how you feel about the ending. There's no way to avoid coming to the fact that historian the baby, the, the ball was dropped. Generic shonen, it has some shonen tropes. I don't think I, I, I think it would be dismissive to say that it was a shonen type of ending. Um, like I've even said that moments felt like shonen esque, and you know, people kind of doing shit for the purpose of like friendship and, and you know, kind of deep seated convictions being changed in just moments because of just you know, someone saying the right things, Zeke and Armin. Um, that's showing shit, but like at the same time, it's not like this was fucking a mirror, like being like, oh, fucking Armin talked me into being, you know, the good person now. Like, it's not like one to one with your typical shonen, you know, Naruto, Obito type shit. <laughs> I guess what he's saying is that shit right there is kind of shonen as. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so like some Game of Thrones shit, basically. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's not. I don't want to see Mappa's version of this. I really don't want to see that at all. But anim animated only with with better translations. Isayama having a whole year to kind of clean up some, you know, maybe get a better version of of his, you know, ultimate ending kind of specified. Cause obviously, like you can see, he has some conflicts how he wanted. His ending versus ending he thought up eight years ago, you know, kind of didn't really know, seemed to have a clear idea what his consensus ending was supposed to be. Um, the thing about Cole Giaz is that, like, I've, I've seen that, that name mentioned in terms of endings before, but like, I've really never seen. Someone say that like verbatim, like with this right now, that they've had a cold gas. And I've never seen that. Fuck, god damn it. All right, man. I'm f no, I'm not gonna spoil cold gas. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna watch it now. I'll, maybe I'll come back and do something else. I don't know. Yeah, they definitely was happy and wholesome. That's, that's exactly what they went for. They went for that. I need to watch Cold Yes. Fuck me, dude. Yeah, my shit cut off. You know, I, was, I still like probably about 10 minutes ago as far as like just closing some shit out. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I have some more thoughts. I'm not even gonna go into it. You know, I I may come back and I'm God, I don't know what will make me come back as far as like even if the translation come out. I, I think I'm giving pretty much everything I can as far as explaining my thought process and this shit. Um, I, the only thing I said that that wasn't captured on the the last video that got cut off is because my key mind is the posture I using posture free in that last video towards the end, and that's what fucked me up. Um. Yeah, I, I just think the feminist angle. I, I think that, I think I think agendas. Um, not not necessarily the feminist agenda. There's there's the Aaron agenda. There's the people that want like a, a real, um, you know, like I think there's a lot of life stories that people kind of look forward to. And in, in season three, um, you know, kind of people want something larger. So a lot of people want a lot of the feminist, the female characters here, and the female characters on paper. The three, the three biggest players in this whole series of an era would probably be Emir, Mikasa, and Astoria. You think about it, you know, they kind of put on the board by Aaron. Now, Aaron did not move them the way I think he would have wanted to. I don't think he would have wanted Astoria to get fucked up the way, or I don't think he would have, well, he did do what he wanted to do with Astoria. Astoria did not get, you know, turned into a titan in any kind of way, which was his, you know, number one, you know, operandi at that moment. And, I don't think he would have wanted Mixer to get messed up the way she did. She wouldn't have. He did want her to be attached, but I just don't think it would have wanted it to go the way that it did. I just don't think the whole thing with Amir, I just don't think that would have went the way it would have went if he had his choice, especially the way that Falling Titan powers were used. He didn't have any control over that, I think, at a certain point. But, you know, again, like I said earlier a thousand times, I think we'll never know how much it was his will versus Amir's. Um. But I do think that it's up to interpretation. You could you could think that those characters, especially more so in Mir and, Astor and uh, Mikasa, were the drivers of everything that happened in the, the last few moments of this series. You're perfectly fine in thinking that. You could think Aaron was the one who pushed Peters in the right way to for us to get to the ending he wanted. That's perfectly fine. But the, that, the thing at the end of the day is that we'll never know. And I think it's going to kill a lot of people. We'll never really know how much it was Aaron, you know, his, the history get like kind of like a little bit pushed, more of a push from Aaron than we kind of even seen in this, you know, past two chapters. You know, what how, what what does Amir wanting the story to, to be the the winner or the the one who breaks the chains? What does that look like from her POV? We'll though. Here's the one thing: we'll never know Amir's POV truly. And that's going to be a cloud over this series that will never ever away. We'll never know truly what Amir want out of this. And I don't even think the anime can depict that in a way that will feel, you know, really elating to, to see. And that's sad, you know. That's it for me. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm done. It's just, uh, you know, we, we, we might do the anime at some point. It's kind of weird to go back to the anime after you just finished the series, but we may go do that at some point. Uh, and come back at y'all, man. Please enjoy. I, I, motherfuckers ain't gonna be watching an hour and, and you know fifteen minute video, but if you do watch it, even like fucking ten minutes of it, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate all the love from the series at this point. I fucks with y'all all heavy. Dedicate your hearts, motherfuckers.